Welcome to Love Unlimited Church Online. My name is Mark Rodriguez. I'm the pastor of the church, and today we have a great service prepared for you. But before we jump in, I'm going to ask you to do a few things. If you're watching on Facebook, start a watch party and leave some comments as you're watching the message. If you're watching on Instagram, go ahead and share this video with your followers by clicking on the little paper airplane there on the bottom of your screen. And if you're watching on YouTube, make sure you subscribe to our channel, you like the video, and that you leave a comment as well. And now, here's the message. Hey guys, so a couple months ago, we're in the Keys. Those of you that know me, you know we love the beach, we love the Keys, and we try to make it down there as much as we can. And when we go down there, we just don't go down there. My wife likes to go super deep down into the Keys. Actually, her favorite beach down there is called Bayonne State Park. Here's a picture of it. It is beautiful. It's actually been voted one of the most beautiful beaches in the state of Florida, in the Sunshine State. So you could just imagine uh, why we like to make it down there. Well, on this particular morning, I'm like, babe, we're on vacation please like i don't want to be stuck on this like super rigid schedule because we're here to relax and it's not relaxing to me my life is like wake up at this time go here drop this person off pick them up i mean it's a lot of work and i don't want to be on a schedule on my day off as we're going to enjoy the beach and so she you know gave in and said okay that's fine if you don't want to be on a schedule i want to make sure we get a good spot at the beach i'm going to leave early with my parents and so she leaves with Stella and her mom and a couple other people and they head off before us and me and the boys stay behind to like load the beach chairs and the tents and the barbecue and the food and the drinks and the towels and all of the gear that we need to have fun at the beach. We're going to put that in my truck. And so they head off almost an hour before us. And, uh, you know, we're getting there nice and slow. We stopped at a 7-Eleven, picked up some snacks, bought some ice and, and we're just cruising. And finally, they get there. This beach is almost two hours away from where we were staying in Kilargo. And they get there and they're like, hey, we're here. Where are you guys? Oh, we're about an hour away. So really an hour away? You know, we're here and we have no shade and we have nowhere to sit. And I'm like, okay, I'll try to get there as fast as I can. And, and the calls kept coming. The text messages came, kept coming. And so you could just imagine when I finally see like the marquee by on the state park, I was so excited. And now I see there's a line for me. I'm like, oh my gosh, there's a line. But finally, I, I could see the little booth where the park ranger collects the toll to go into the park and as i'm approaching there's like one car in front of me my phone rings again i'm like babe there's just one car in front of me i'm almost there give me a break and then i get there and she's still on the phone and the guy tells me hey i'm sorry but the park is closed we're full you can't go in and she's like did he just say the park was full i'm like yes I'm like, sir, look, my wife's on the phone. She's on the other side. Can you just please let me go? He's like, no, I'm sorry, sir. The park is full. And then I see like two cars drive by. I'm like, look, two cars just drove by. He goes, sir, I'm sorry. The park is full. You can't go in. And you could just imagine all the things going through my head. I'm just going to step on the gas and make a run for it, right? But then I, I'd get busted and, and things wouldn't work out. And, and, and with all the pain in my heart and knowing what was going to expect me once I made it into the park, because I had been just uncompliant uh, I, I left and I was heartbroken I was heartbroken I was devastated that in the middle of a vacation in the middle of a time that was supposed to be fun now my family was on the other side of this gate and they were without covering without drinks without towels without anything I had all that stuff and I couldn't reach them I made a promise to them and I couldn't make it to the promised land. I couldn't make it to the beach to enjoy a time of relaxation and fun in the sun. Guys, I'm sure that this has happened to all of us. We've had dreams. We have had hopes. We have had aspirations. And something and someone gets in the way of where we need to be, gets in the way of our destiny, gets in the way of our reward, gets in the way of the plan that God has for us. Have you ever felt that way? Have you ever felt like someone just showed up and robbed you of what was yours? Hey, maybe for you, it's something you've been praying about, something that God has promised you. And yet you haven't been able to possess it because there is something that is standing in the way of it and you have no idea how to overcome that. Say, hey, that's what we're going to talk about today. We're actually going to look at one of the most popular stories in the Bible. All right. It's the story of David and Goliath. And all of us know the way the story ends. Hey, at the end, David kills Goliath. But the question is, how 
did he do it? And you're probably thinking, oh, with a slingshot and a couple of smooth stones. No, that's like technically how he did it, but that's not how he defeated the giant that he was facing. See, all of us in life, we face giants. Maybe you are facing a giant today and you're wondering, how in the world am I going to overcome this situation that I'm in? And I believe that the young boy, David, the shepherd from Bethlehem, shows us exactly how. You see, David shows up to the camp of the Israelites and he sees that the enemy is there. He sees that the enemy has surrounded them. And not only have they been surrounded, but the enemy is taunting them. The enemy is mocking them. The enemy has been showing up day after day to intimidate. Day after day to ridicule and mock them. And not just mock them, but mock their God and mock their faith. And David shows up to bring a couple snacks to his brothers that were at war because he was just a little forgotten shepherd boy and he says hey what is going on here who is this man and you see david actually he recognizes something about goliath that was different from him he recognizes that there was a difference between him and goliath oh yeah goliath was a giant and he was small no something even bigger than that you see in the bible sometimes we have clues we have things that are repeated And in scripture, when you see something repeated, it is worth noting. You see, sometimes Jesus will say something like, verily, verily, I say to you, you know, Martha, Martha, when he goes to resurrect Lazarus from the dead, you see twice in this story of David in Samuel chapter 17, David mentions something two times that is overlooked many times, many times when this story is told and here lies the key as to how David conquered the giant in his life. And I believe for you and for me, whatever giant it is that you are facing in your life right now, here is the key. In 1 Samuel 17, verse 26, David says this, Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? And then in verse 36, he says it again. He says, Your servant has killed both the lion and the bear. This uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them because he has defiled the armies of the living God. Twice David is saying, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Guys, this is more than just a physical thing. David is talking about who is this man that is not part of the covenant that we have made with God. You see, the children of Israel had this covenant with God that every man on the eighth day would be circumcised. And I know this sounds a little personal, but it is, it's very personal. It is very personal. And it is the key as to why and how David, the little boy, was able to confront this killer that everyone was scared of. It's because he recognized that he had a promise that Goliath did not have. You see, for us to overcome the obstacles in our life, there needs to be a shift of perspective. We need to shift the way that we look at the problems in our life and recognize that everything is spiritual, that it is not the problem that we're facing, but what lies beyond that problem. It's what lies beneath that problem. And you see, David looked beyond what Israel was seeing. Israel saw a man that had a hundred pounds of armor. Israel saw a giant. Israel saw a man that had four brothers that were killers too. Israel was scared about what it saw. Yet David looked beyond that. He looked at the spiritual and knew that he would have the victory. See, that happens to us so much in life. We're looking at our day to day and we don't recognize what is right in front of us. The other day, my daughter was disappointed because she couldn't find one of her birthday presents. All right. It was a pair of AirPods that we had bought her and she couldn't find her AirPods. And she's like, Papi, I've looked everywhere and i would say have you looked under your bed have you looked under your covers have you looked in the shoes and i'm just making things up as to where she can look to find her airpods and she just said bobby can you please just help me look for them and i walked into the room and in a matter of minutes 
I found the AirPods. And she couldn't believe it. She couldn't believe that I found her AirPods. And then she goes, Bobby, how'd you find my AirPods? And I said, Stella, you know what the difference is? You were looking for a pair of AirPods and I was looking for $150. See, that's what happens to us in our life. We're, we're looking at this problem and instead of looking at it through the lens of Jesus and the power and the promises and the covenant that we have with God, we're just looking at the problem and we are forgetting the victory that is ours and the promises that the Lord has given us. Look at what is unseen don't look at what is seen see israel was looking again at this mighty warrior but david was looking at what was spiritual first my friends when you're confronted with problems in your life with giants in your life are you allowing the problem to consume you are you going to god as a last resort is prayer something that you say all we have left to do is pray or do you fall on your knees before the presence of god and say god i surrender this thing to you God, I trust you regardless of what is happening in the world, regardless if I understand it or not. Do you recognize the covenant that you have with God? You're probably thinking, Mark, you've been saying covenant over and over and over again. What does that mean? You see, a covenant is the way that God makes an agreement with his children. That is how he interacts with us. He says, I am making a promise. I am making a covenant with you. If you accept Jesus, that means that you are part of a new covenant. You are part, you are forgiven by God. But let me tell you something. You can be part of a covenant. You can be in a covenant and not be under a covenant, not be under the protection of the covenant of God. And so you can be in the covenant and not under the covenant. And you're probably thinking, Mark, that sounds so weird. I'll prove it to you. All right. Let's let's just pretend that the covenant is like an umbrella. Right. And it's raining outside and I, I have the covering. But unless I get under the covering, I am not protected from the rain unless I allow the covenant, unless I accept it. I have the benefit of it. I can hold it. But I am not living in the blessing of the covenant because for me to live in the blessing of the covenant, I must be under the covering of God. And you see, that is the difference between David and the children of Israel. They knew about the covenant. They were in the covenant. The promise was there, but they were so focused on the giant that they were not abiding under the covering and the protection of the covenant and the promises of God. And because of that, the giant showed up every single day and mocked them. And so David, full of the promise and the boldness of God, stands before Goliath and says, you may look big, you may look scary, but I come against you in the name of God and no weapon formed against me shall prosper. And yes, you may look scary, but I will come against you. David says this, that I attacked the bear when the bear came to attack my flock. I attacked the lion. I ran towards the lion and there, right there lies another key. You see, as Christians, we live life all the time on defense. Oh my God, this problem came. Pastor, I need prayer. Oh my gosh, I'm sick. Oh, I, I need to pray. Oh, I'm having problems with my kids. Let me take them to church. We live a life of defense and we have been called to live a life of offense. And that is what David is saying there. When I was attacked by the bear, I ran towards the bear. When the bear came to take my sheep, I ran towards him. When the lion came to eat my sheep, I ran towards him. And that is the same approach that he takes with Goliath. Goliath showed up to fight against God's children and to defile the name of God and to mock the name of God and to say that he was bigger than God. And he ran towards the problem. He did not allow the problem to control him. You see, the Bible tells us this in Matthew chapter 18. It says this, truly, I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth 
will be loosed in heaven. That's Matthew 18, 18. You know what that means? That when you're a Christian, you do not operate in defense. You operate in offense. That God wants us not to talk faith. God wants us to walk by faith. He wants us to live by faith, not lip by faith. He wants us to move and take steps of faith. He wants us to live a life of faith. See, so many of us say, hey, I want to live a faithful life. I want faith to be the center of my life. Yet, we don't take risks in Jesus' name. Yet, we are ashamed to say that we believe. Yet, we are ashamed to say, yes, I am in the middle of the most difficult season in my life, but Jesus is greater than my circumstance. Hey, if you want God to move in your life, Jesus is telling you today, you better get moving. He is saying, just like he said in Matthew 18, 18, whatever you bind on earth, I will bind in heaven. And so what he is saying is, I got your back. What he is saying is, if you begin to move, I will move with you. And we see this all along scripture, everywhere in scripture. Moses stands before the Red Sea. And what does the Lord tell him to do? To grab your staff and lift it up. And then God parts the Red Sea. Joshua is standing before the Jordan. And God promises that he is also going to make the water recede. But he says, tell the priest to go into the water. Take a step of faith. When Jesus goes to resurrect uh, Lazarus from the dead, what does he say? Move the stone, roll the stone away. When he shows up to Peter, when Peter is fishing and he can't fish, what does he tell Peter? Go and cast your net. Today, God is looking at you and he recognizes that you are in an impossible situation. And he is saying, move, have faith, take that risk. I am with you. I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. He is saying that wherever you step, it will be holy ground. God, it wants to give you the victory. The victory is yours. Run the race and win. Run the race and receive the joy that God has for you today. Stop looking at your giant and allowing your giant to torment you. Look at your giant and say, I have a covenant that you don't have. I have a promise that you don't have. Hebrews 11, 6 says this, it is impossible to please God without faith. Anyone who wants to come to him must believe that God exists and that he rewards those who sincerely seek him. It is impossible. There is no way that you can please God without having faith. And so my challenge to you today in your most difficult hour is that you put all your confidence and all your trust in Jesus. You see, the Bible is the word of God. And in God's word, we have so many rich promises, so many rich guidelines as to how to live life and how to be happy and how to enjoy eternity with Jesus, how to overcome the struggles of life. But for those that have faith, for those that have a covenant with God, God has special messages. God has moments that he wants to share with us that no one else may know about. Moments when you're alone, moments when you're broken, moments when you're crying. That if you seek him, and then if you choose to abide under the covering, not just in it, but under it, that God is going to speak to you in ways that you could never imagine. In Psalm 25, it actually says, the ones who are in my covenant know my ways and I will tell him my secrets. Guys, God loves you. Guys, you have the victory. Some of you right now are standing in front of the biggest giant that you've ever faced. I know I know for me and my family, those of you that have been walking along this, this journey with us in the last couple weeks, you know, with my sisters being very sick, it's been tough and our faith has been challenged. But we're standing in front of the biggest giant that we've ever faced. And we're telling that giant that we have a covenant. We're speaking to that giant the same way that David spoke 
to that Philistine. In the book of uh, 1 Samuel chapter 17, David said to the Philistine, you come against me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel who have been defied. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hand and I will strike you down and cut off your head. This very day I will give the carcasses of the Philistines armies to the birds and the wild animals and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel and all those who gather here will know that it is not by sword or spear that the Lord saves for the battle is the Lord's and he will give all of you into our hands. As the Philistines moved closer to attack him, David ran offense quickly towards the battle line to meet him, reaching into his bag and taking out a stone. He slung it and struck the Philistine on the forehead and the stone sank into his forehead and he fell face down on the ground. My friends, the giant will fall. My friends, God is greater than whatever problem you're facing today. And he is good even when you don't understand why. Trust him today. Hey, maybe you're watching this message and you feel far from God. I wanna pray for you. I wanna pray that today you would begin a relationship that will transform your life forever. And so I'm gonna lead you in a prayer and I'm gonna ask you to repeat these words after me. Just close your eyes, bow your heads and repeat this out loud. Say, dear God, I come to you today and I say I'm sorry for the mistakes that I've made, for the sins that I've committed. I give you my life. I give you everything. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hey, if you prayed that prayer today, let me tell you, you made the best decision of your life and I want to help you. Take a couple steps so it'll draw you closer to Jesus and all you need to do is text the word CONNECT to 786-541-1020. Text the word CONNECT to 786-541-1020. And I'm gonna send you some resources that are gonna help you draw closer to Jesus. Maybe you're watching this message today and you wanna help us reach more people. You wanna help our ministry grow. You can do that by making a donation today by going to loveunlimited.com forward slash give or by using Cash App, the dollar sign and the word love unlimited. It's real easy and hey, it's gonna help us keep doing the great work that we're doing here in Miami and around the world through our online ministry. And now I'm gonna invite you to worship with the Love Unlimited Band. you 
enjoyed that song the way that I did. We can't wait to see you next time.